Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Glory be to Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Today I'd like to make a short commentary on Psalm 127. Psalm 27 in the Liturgy of the Hours is normally prayed during afternoon time, the, uh, the hour of um, non or the ninth hour. I try to pray it normally around 3 p.m., give or take a few situations where I'm busy and I can't exactly make it on 3 p at 3 p.m., so I'll pray it, pray it sometimes at 4, sometimes as late as 5 if I plan to pray evening prayer a little past 6 uh, uh, or a little later than normal. So anyway, uh, this is one of the uh, songs of ascent the daytime psalms uh, in the single volume of the Liturgy of the Hours, Christian Prayer, um, is very effective because the selection of psalms deal with everyday problems that we encounter as human beings. Um, now this one is prayed in the afternoon, after the first psalm of the afternoon, uh, 126, but I already have another commentary on 126 in another video. So, personally, afternoon prayer is probably my favorite time to pray because it's when I'm already really wrapped up in the day's events. Uh, my mind is just all over the place. And so, praying at 3 p.m. between work and going home, uh, it helps ground me and, and it helps me recall what is truly important, which is the, the salvation of my soul and uh, the kingdom of God. And so I'll just read through this psalm and then uh, comment on it. Again, my commentaries are not uh, uh, independent commentaries. I, I don't, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not the deepest person in the world, but I, I base my commentaries on the commentaries of uh, St. Augustine. Uh, because they're just so profound and just so dead on and um, I'm, I'm very, very blessed to have access to uh, Augustine's commentary on the Psalms. Uh, I highly recommend you download it. It's um, for free online. If you, if you want any information, just look up uh, St. Augustine's commentary on the Psalms and you should be led right to it. So anyway, Psalm 127. And the New Testament... Uh, uh, verse that is used to sort of introduce the theme is that you are God's building. Now we have uh, a psalm here that in essence what it says is that we can do nothing on our own, that uh, by ourselves we are nothing but biodegradable matter and that it is God who uh, gives life to the body and is God who gives eternal life to the soul and body. Um, so it says, if the Lord does not build the house, in vain do its builders labor. If the Lord does not watch over the city, in vain does the watchman keep vigil. In vain is your earlier rising, your going later to rest. You who toil for the bread you eat, when he pours gifts on his beloved while they slumber. Truly sons are a gift from the, a gift from the Lord, a blessing, the fruit of the womb. Indeed, the sons of youth are like arrows in the hand of a warrior. Oh, the happiness of the man who has filled his quiver with these arrows. He will have no cause for shame when he disputes with his foes in the gateways. So let's just stick to the, the initial uh, literal sense of the text in that uh, it basically says that no matter what we do, no matter how many accomplishments we have uh, under our belt, uh, ultimately we will die and we will have to return to our Creator. And so our focus in life should be God and uh, serving him and so a lot of the plans we make whether it be college or buying a house or uh, going to, to going to this or that location um, a lot of those are great but in the end they don't really matter uh, because God is the one who is in control of the entire cosmos and God is in the one, in control of when we live and when we die uh, I was just, I had a realization just the other day that uh, I have a spine, I am a vertebrate. I, I didn't 
consciously choose to be a vertebrate. I could have been a jellyfish, I mean, but somehow I ended up becoming a vertebrate and that had nothing to do with any decision on my part, no conscious decision. Um, I have a beginning and I have an ending and that's just something we all kind of have to accept. Now, how is this found in the psalm? Because it says, if the Lord doesn't build the house, or if Lord, the Lord is not master of your house, master of your life, your temple, your body, in vain do you exercise, in vain do you eat healthy food, in vain, or is, it's pointless to think you have control over your destiny. Yeah, you may be able to uh, have a strong body, you may be, but it is God who makes it possible for your body to even grow once it receives the nutrients from healthy food. So that's that's what it means, that we're completely uh, at God's mercy. And in vain is your earlier rising, your go, going later to rest. That even though if, if you go to bed early or if you rise up early to do your work, um, it's it's all possible because God made, made it possible. God is the one who made it possible for you to sleep, made it possible for you to rise, and gives you the strength to be able to uh, eat and to, to, to digest food and to be able to work. And then here's the real um, powerful part where it says, when he pours gifts on his beloved while they slumber, that we never realize that while we sleep, anything, I mean, anything could happen to us while we sleep. Yet God doesn't sleep. God is immortal. God is eternal. And so whether we're, we are awake or asleep, God continues to pour his gifts on us, on those who love him. And then here, in the, in, the, in the literal sense, it's basically saying that uh, if you have a big family, that um, your sons, if you have a lot of sons, that they'll protect you in times of trouble. Um, but in a spiritual sense, what it means is uh, the sons would be the fruits of your spiritual life, the gifts of the spirit, um, the womb being the temple of God or the church, and the sons of youth, the youth of spiritual fervor, uh, are like arrows, arrows being the gospel in the hand of a warrior, a spiritual warrior. So it's saying that um, if you put your total trust in God, that God will build you, God will raise your body at the end of time, and you will have no cause for shame when you dispute with your foes in the gateways. The gateways here could be understood as uh, the city gates. In ancient cities, they were uh, inside, they were enclosed in giant walls, and there was only one way in, that was through the gate, and that's where people would often uh, do business transactions. But in a spiritual sense, what it means is that uh, um, that if you are uh, full of the Holy Spirit, if you are a son of God, uh, you will be given the wisdom and the supernatural strength to deal with any adversity uh, in life and ultimately on the day of our death, our, our death, so uh, in that judgment. So it's a very uh, powerful psalm, for, uh, and it really helps you put things into perspective, that um, God is the one who is in control. The only thing we really have control over is our, our choice, that we can choose to follow him or not. We can choose the spiritual life or not, and um, we can reap the uh, consequences accordingly. So please pray for me and uh, pray for my family. Uh, we always need prayers. and. Uh, Keep the spiritual life going. It is the, the only way to true joy. At least that's what I think. So, oh, the happiness who is filled, the happiness of the man who has filled his quiver, quivers, quiver with these arrows. He will have no cause for shame when he disputes with his foes in the gateways. God bless you and keep you.